Good evening from New York. I'm Chris Hayes. We are just a few days away from the next major primary night, this time in Pennsylvania. Both the governor's mansion and one of the state's Senate seats are open races without an incumbent on the ticket, which means both parties see a real opportunity there. In the Senate race, Republicans are hoping to hold the seat that is being vacated by retiring Senator Pat Toomey, but they've faced some obstacles along the way. You see, Donald Trump, of course, was the anti-establishment candidate in 2016 and 2015, so self-styled as such, but he is now the Republican establishment. And recreating the party in his image has caused some headaches. Trump's preferred candidate in that open Senate race in Pennsylvania was a guy named Sean Parnell, a former Army Ranger and, of course, frequent Fox News guest. He had to suspend his campaign after he lost a custody battle with his estranged wife, during which she accused him of domestic abuse. She says Parnell choked her and slapped one of their children so hard it left a handprint. Parnell denies the allegations, but nevertheless dropped out of that Senate race. So then the MAGA establishment wing of the party was left scrambling for a new candidate, and it settled on TV doctor and dietary supplement salesman Mehmet Oz, Trump's second endorsed candidate in the race. Republicans, using the same strategy Trump used in 2016, hoping a wealthy celebrity with strong name recognition would be able to clear the field. But things have not been going great for Dr. Oz. I mean, to start with, and maybe this is overly basic, but Dr. Oz doesn't live in Pennsylvania. He doesn't live close to Pennsylvania. He lives in New Jersey across the Hudson River from New York, like as far from Pennsylvania as I do, some 90 miles from the house he rents from his wife's parents. And while, of course, being of Turkish descent certainly isn't disqualifying, the fact that he voted in the 2018 Turkish election has the MAGA faithful scratching their heads a little bit. But his very tenuous connections to Pennsylvania may or may not be a deal breaker. Instead, Oz appears to suffer from what you might call an authenticity issue. The multi-millionaire TV surgeon has had a difficult time connecting with voters in the Pennsylvania heartland. And so he made an ad. My father taught me how to handle my first gun. I taught my son Oliver how to do the same. I've been shooting and hunting my whole life. So when people say I won't support guns, they're dead wrong. Boom! Other conservatives know that I'm strong on the Second Amendment. Ted Nugent, Rick Perry, President Trump. But our Second Amendment is not just about hunting. It's about our constitutional right to protect ourselves from intruders or an overly intrusive government. You notice the cutaway when the clay pigeon gets hit by the bullet? You think he shot it? Maybe someone else did. I don't know. So how does a syndicated TV doctor let the MAGA faithful know that he's not some liberal vaccine mandating doctor? Well, you spell it out to the crowd with some Trumpian pandering. Are you willing to fight China? Yeah. Will you fight for our kids in our schools? Yeah. Are you going to fight back to keep our borders clean? Yeah. You're going to fight back to make sure we don't have Fauci. You want to fire Fauci? Yeah. I thought that would get you worked up. I thought that would get you worked up, saying the quiet part loud. But the openly cynical approach, uh, it has worked in the past, we have to say, but it may not be working as well as Oz had hoped here. Just listen to the assessment of one man who attended that very rally. I personally don't care for Dr. Oz that much. I'm not exactly sure why Trump supported him, but, you know. Um, Are you for sure not going to vote for him, though? Uh, probably not at this point in time, unless some things change. Okay, so Dr. Oz not exactly clearing the field. His other major opponent, businessman David McCormick, doesn't seem to be firing up the base either. Now, either Oz or McCormick are likely favorites to win the seat, but there's another candidate in the race as well, and she was a distant third and has just been shooting up the charts. Kathy Barnett is a veteran and a radical right political commentator who appears to be gaining traction with Republican primary voters, in large part to her authentically extremist views. In an old blog post, just for one example, she once referred to the, quote, homosexual agenda as, quote, immoral and perverse, going on to write, quote, make no mistake about it. Homosexuality is a targeted group in the Bible, right along with cheats, drunkards, liars, foul mouths, extortionists, robbers, and any other habitual sin. But Barnett is perhaps best known for her, frankly, disgusting anti-Muslim bigotry. Just listen to comments she made in a YouTube video uploaded back in 2015, uncovered by journalist Andrew Kaczynski. The mindset of a Muslim is very different from the mindset of Americans. And that's the reason why we cannot fully understand the level, the depth of the depravity, the depth of the evil, because it's just not a part of the American fabric for the most part. 
Always useful to run the test where you replace Muslims with Jews and see how that sounds, see if it scans, see if that person would be a candidate for mainstream Mossos. Truly horrible stuff, whichever religion you're talking about there. That same year, Barnett also posted a tweet saying, quote, pedophilia is a cornerstone of Islam. Now, NBC News reporter Dasha Burns actually asked Barnett about that tweet. Take a listen to what Barnett had to say. I mean, this tweet says pedophilia is a cornerstone of Islam. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't think that's me. I would never have said that. Okay. I would have never said that because I don't believe that. Yeah, no, doesn't ring a bell. Now, Barnett's defense appears to be that someone else posted it, but I got to say, the tweet is still up. As of today, it is available to view on her page, which is public. You can just pull it up on your browser so you can be the judge there. But since the first week of April, Barnett has been surging in the polls. Just look at the purple line on your screen. She's gone from single digits to the top of the pack in just the past six weeks. It's basically a dead heat. And that has made the MAGA establishment scared of Kathy Barnett. And they are now bringing out the big guns against her. Conservative hero and former intelligence officer Rick Cornell, himself a noxious social media troll, has been tweeting about Barnett being unfit for office. And Fox News star Sean Hannity came out today with a simple message, quote, Kathy Barnett cannot win a general election PA. And that is after Hannity dedicated the first 20 minutes, 20 minutes of his show last night just to attacking Barnett, which even for Fox, which has never shied away from endorsing specific candidates, is laying it on pretty thick. Let me put it very simply here. I don't see any scenario where Kathy Barnett can win a general election in Pennsylvania. You see what's going on in Pennsylvania. Now, Kathy Barnett had... You know, very low uh, polling numbers. Then she surges. Nobody vetted her. Nobody. And by the way, in 24 hours, it wasn't hard to do. And these these are so incendiary. They render her clearly unelectable. <laughs> so incendiary, clearly unelectable. Now, Hannity's Fox colleague Laura Ingram did offer a mild defense of Barnett during her show. But even Donald Trump himself went on the attack yesterday, releasing a statement that seemed to come out of nowhere unless you were following this whole backstory, saying, quote, Kathy Barnett will never be able to win the general election against the radical left Democrats. She has many things in her past which have not been properly explained or vetted. But if, but if she's able to do so, she will have a wonderful future in the Republican Party, and I will be behind her all the way. Dr. Oz is the only one who will be able to easily defeat the crazed lunatic Democrat in Pennsylvania. A vote for anyone else in the primary is a vote against victory in the fall. Uh, two things. First, as an aside, notice that there's no nominee in the Democratic Party. They're just the crazed lunatic because they haven't actually picked it. But also, do you see what Trump's doing there, right? He's saying she can't win, but if she does, he'll support her, hedging his bets so he can turn around and say he wasn't wrong if she wins the nomination. More importantly, and you've probably caught on to this, there's more than a little irony at play here. Donald Trump and his allies in the right-wing media are being put in the exact same position they put the establishment Republicans back in 2015. They're closing ranks against an outside candidate with extremist, noxious, bigoted views and calling her unelectable. And there is something truly astounding about Donald Trump, of all people, and Sean Hannity saying Barnett should be disqualified for her incendiary comments about Muslims. When Trump himself won the primary in 2016, in no small part, it appears by calling for a complete ban on Muslims entering the country. Republicans have a very specific fear here. Reince Priebus, Trump's chief of staff, the former head of the RNC, articulated it plainly on Hannity last night. But I, you know, I'm afraid it's like a Christine O'Donnell waiting to happen again, if anyone remembers that in, 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 in 2010. Sharon Angle. 2011. Um, yeah, I mean, that was a, a crazy year. Priebus is using Christine O'Donnell, a uniquely bad candidate who cost Republicans a Senate seat, a very winnable one in Delaware back in 2010, as a shorthand for the party's tendency to blow winnable races, particularly Senate races, by nominating fringe candidates. And Kathy Barnett would surely have some trouble in the general. Though I got to say, it is worth asking, in a post-Donald Trump world, are there Christine O'Donnells anymore? Or is party affiliation and the sort of larger political environment alone enough to carry a candidate to victory, no matter how thoroughly noxious their views are? 